to lead Kentucky in rebounding was Sam Bowie, who averaged 8.1 a game, just a tenth more than Mills, back in the 79-80 season. Mills misses the second one, so Kentucky will take a one-point lead. Vanderbilt with his first possession. Man-to-man -man by Kentucky. Both teams start man-to-man, -man and Kentucky putting good pressure outside. Cornett hands off to Booker. Can't hit it, but he's fouled. Looked like a nice feed inside. We're going to see a replay. It looked like a nice feed from Booker inside to uh, Cornett, and he just a little give and go. Got fouled. Booker inside. Almost got the three-point play, but it was a nice read by Cornett on the cut. Foul uh, actually was on Reggie Henson. Henson number 35 with the first Kentucky foul as arms were flying everywhere. Barry Booker steps to the line where you see he hits 68 and a half percent on the season. And he gives Vanderbilt the lead. One thing Vanderbilt's doing here defensively is they're going to try to face guard Sean Sutton defensively and keep the ball off of him and really try to wear him down. Obviously they know he's been a little sick and they're going to try to wear him down physically it looks like. So we'll keep an eye on Sutton and his stamina. There he threw them all away right to Barry Booker. He takes it the other way for the Commodores. Booker can't get a shot away. Wilcox looks inside. Reed blocked and a foul on Ellis. All right, here you see Wilcox are just spreading out the court and isolating inside on Reed. Ellis is late getting over on the help side. He makes a pretty good block, but it looks like he got Reed with the body. Again, there's the lob pass inside Hanson fronting. Ellis is a little bit late coming over from the weak side and commits the foul. So Eric Reed will go to the free throw line where he hits about 73%. That one off the back of the rim and no good. Reed averaging 10 points and five rebounds a game. The junior out of Macon, Georgia, also started as a sophomore. Had his career high earlier this year, 25 points against Ohio State, and a career high 11 rebounds against Murray State. And the Commodores have their biggest lead. They're up 3-1. You can see Kentucky's running a little high post series time. They throw the ball high to Ellis, and then look, he looks to throw to either wing, and the wing players, either Sutton or Miller, are just looking to feed inside to Hanson and Mills. Very simple offense. There's the feed in to the high post. They cut down, screen down by the wings, and now you can look them trying to feed inside. It's strictly a power offense. Reed overplaying, got a hand on it, but Miller saves it to Ellis. No good. Rebounded by Booker. Vanderbilt on the run. Go Heen. Dishes to Reed. Too hard. Strong rebound by Mills. Mills fakes, back out to Sutton. Inside Ellis. No good. Rebounded again by Wilcox of Vanderbilt. That basket will not count. A foul on Kentucky, and Vanderbilt really pushing the ball up the floor. Definitely Vanderbilt wants to run, force the pace. They're a little bit smaller. They, they start three guards in the game, Wilcox, Booker, and Goheen, so obviously they feel they're a little bit quicker and want to run the ball down the floor, while at the other end, Kentucky thinks they're taller, bigger. They're trying to pound the ball inside. Foul was called on Derek Miller, his first, and three now against Kentucky. As Vandy puts it into play, with 17 and a half minutes left in the first half, 3-1 Vanderbilt. As in most cases, on the out-of-bounds play, Kentucky's in the zone. Most teams will zone on an out-of-bounds play to try to keep the ball from being thrown into the lane. Booker's three-point shot, no good. Miller collects the rebound for Kentucky. Wildcats push it up the floor. Inside to Ellis. That basket will not count. He was pushed before he got the shot away. That'll be the second foul on Vanderbilt as Eddie Sutton looks the length of the court. And again, Tom, I think it's obvious the game plan of Coach Sutton and his staff uh, they are trying strictly to pound the ball inside and take advantage of the height and the athletic ability that Kentucky has. They have yet to take a perimeter shot. Foul committed by Frank Cornett. And there is a pushing foul inside, away from the ball, an elbow from, was it Hanson? Looked like Hanson uh, on the cut just stuck his elbow up in the air and caught one of the Vanderbilt players, and the referee saw it, Tom O'Neill. So Reggie Hanson with his second foul. We've played three minutes of the game. Neither team has a field goal. Vandy 0 for 2, Kentucky 0 for 3. Booker, three-pointer. 
Barry Booker, who's six in the SEC in three-point percentage, hitting 45.2%, puts Vandy up by five. That's the big thing Kentucky has to try to stop defensively is the, is the perimeter game of Goheen and Booker shooting from the three-point line. Here's a pretty turnaround jump shot by LaRon Ellis. He gets Kentucky's first field goal, cutting the lead back to three. Goheen's pass intercepted by Kentucky, then they throw it away. Three, slam. Beautiful pass right there by Goheen off the steal. It was kind of a look-away feed for the slam. Uh, great opportunistic basketball by Vanderbilt. Derek Miller tripped by Barry Goheen. First foul on Goheen, number three against the Commodores. Both teams a little bit tight here early, Tom. Obviously, it's a big game for both teams. They both want to win. They're kind of feeling each other out and a little bit tentative on offense, as indicated by the field goal percentage. But they ought to get cranked up here pretty soon. I think we're going to see a heck of a game before this is all over. Chris Mills will pitch it in for the Wildcats. They set a screen for Miller. He's open. His three-pointer rims out. Ellis offensive rebound. Right back to Miller. Maybe tried one pass too many. Sutton saves it for Kentucky. Leave him wide open. He can't hit it. Gets his own rebound. Sutton again. No good. Finally, it's Goheen for Vanderbilt. Goheen runs by everybody and lays it in. Beautiful play by Goheen. Obviously, you're taught in early basketball as a youngster to stop the basketball on the break. Kentucky didn't do it that time, and Goheen got the layup. Vanderbilt playing a zone defense this time, it looks like Joe. Sutton fires over it and hits it. That was only a two-point shot. Two-pointer for Sean Sutton. Looks like they switched to a little bit of a matchup. They're going to let Sean Sutton shoot that shot. If he can make that shot, it'll be a big plus for Kentucky tonight. Sutton, not a scorer, only averages five a game, shooting 41%. Had a career-high 13 against Auburn earlier. That shot won't go, and Mills has the rebound. Hanson, baseline drive. Ellis wasn't ready for the pass. Booker, blocked by Ellis. Sutton the other way. Cornette is back. And now Sutton will hold it up. Ellis. Nice move by Ellis. And a charging foul. LaRon Ellis lost control of the basketball in the air and then committed the charge. LaRon Ellis is struggling a little bit right here. They're, Kentucky's really looking to go inside to him. Here's the replay. Here's Ellis taking it into the lane. Wilcox sets up beautifully and draws a charge. Tough, gutsy little play by Wilcox there. Five foot 11 against the 6'10 Ellis. And it results in the second personal foul on the Ron Ellis. He and the Wildcats trail by five. For the pride. taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. There's no reason for you to jump through hoops when you're looking for a great room at a great price. Just look for a Days Inn, hotel, or suite. Our 300 owners right here in the SEC are not only bringing you this conference broadcast, but they're bringing you a great room at a great price with restaurants, lounges, and even meeting rooms. So if you're looking for a great room at a great price, choose a day's in. Staying anywhere else is a foul. For your farm, your family, your piece of America. Today's game is brought to you in part by your local Cyanamid Agri-Center dealer, representing America's best agricultural suppliers and committed to helping farmers care for the land. Agri-Center means more. We hope all of you enjoy today's game. This half of SEC basketball is brought to you in part by the owners of Days Inns, hotels and suites in the Southeastern Conference. 14.42 left to go on the half. C.M. Newton and his Commodores leading the Wildcats of Kentucky 10-5. Neither team shooting very well. 
Vanderbilt three of seven, 42.8. Kentucky hitting only two of its first nine shots for 22.2%. Kentucky comes back out of the timeout in a zone. Looks like they're going to match up in a 2-3 zone. Mills out front with Miller. They've taken Sutton out of the game. There you see the shooting, and Mike Scott is in to replace Sean Sutton. Scott is the 6'11 senior from South Shore, Kentucky, averaging three points a game. So we'll see uh, Miller and Mills in the backcourt for Kentucky now with Sutton out and Scott in. Almost a steal if Scott could have reacted a little quicker. Right. If I could hit it off his foot. And Goheen, given a new life, bombs a three-pointer. Barry Goheen, who in the earlier game in Lexington hit six straight three-point shots against the Wildcats, puts Vandy up 13-5. And Vanderbilt, you can see, comes out of the timeout in a zone of their own. They look like they're in a little bit of a uh, one, looks like a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Booker will play in the middle and then go out to the corner to cover the corner. It's kind of an unusual 1-3-1, one, one, but something that Vanderbilt uses quite a bit. Nice steal there by Booker. Booker, with his quickness, picks off the pass, and Vandy up court to Goheen. Booker for three. No good. Ellis, with good position, had Cornette blocked off, and without leaving the floor, takes the rebound. To start the game, Kentucky, as, I, as we talked about at the top of the show, really wanted to pound the ball inside, and especially with these two big guys, Scott and Ellis, in the game, they'd really like to establish the inside game, and I think that's one of the reasons Vanderbilt's gone to the zone. Ellis, off the offensive board, gets his fourth point. As always in a zone, Tom, you have poor blockout responsibilities, and that's what happened right there with Ellis getting the offensive putback. There's the score with 13 minutes left in the first half. That's the three-point situation. Vanderbilt led the league in three-point shots last year. Goheen misses a three-pointer. But Booker collects the rebound, and the Commodores set it up again. Cross-court pass. Reed can't handle it. He was going one way, the pass the other, and Vanderbilt turns it over for the second time tonight. Kentucky has turned it over four times. Kentucky trying to cut into that lead with 12.35 left in the half. What you see is a Vanderbilt. It's really a 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Yeah. Ellis lost it off his knee out of bounds. And basically, Barry Booker is the key in the zone because he's playing at the foul line, and when the ball goes to the wing, he slides down in front of the low post, and he's picked up two steals back-to-back -back just playing that position. Fifth Kentucky turnover in the first seven and a half minutes. A little surprised to see Kentucky in a zone at this juncture of the game with, with the perimeter shooting of Booker and Goheen, but apparently they, 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 they want to protect their big guys, and they think that Vanderbilt's quicker than that. Beautiful baseline jumper, Barry Booker. He has seven points in the early going, and Vanderbilt leads it 15-7, equaling their biggest lead. Little backcourt pressure almost caused the Kentucky turnover. Booker hit it last. Booker played at uh, Battleground Academy just south of here, Tom, in Franklin, Tennessee. Coach Gary Smith has done an excellent job with that program and, and uh, has made Barry Booker a, a fine player here at Vanderbilt. We've got a timeout with 11.57 left in the half. Darren Feldhouse just into the game for Kentucky. The Wildcats trail. This is my new Buick Skylark. And since it's a Buick, it doesn't surprise me that the Skylark is very stylish. With room for five. And it's smooth and powerful. What did surprise me, though, is that Buick's little limousine is priced less than a Honda Accord DX. So, I got a little limousine for the price of a little car. The great American belongs to Buick. If you can tighten a bolt, put a key in a lock, Bracket a shelf, you have the basic nuts and bolts it takes to fix up what needs to be fixed up around your house. And Lowe's has everything you need to fix up anything you have that has anything to do with your house. Inside, outside, topside, and underneath. Lowe's has it all. So why don't you fix it? For whatever you need to maintain your home, we have it all at Lowe's. Fix it. I don't know, Mountain Mike. I guess I've just been telling folks about Quick Mart for such a long time now, I don't know what else to say. Well, now, don't Quick Mart have the best gasoline money can buy? Golf? Sure. And doesn't Quick Mart have all kinds of groceries and snacks? Yeah. And doesn't Quick Mart have the cleanest stores and the friendliest staff around? Well, of course they do. Well, don't you think folks have enough sense to figure that out for themselves? Well, I guess so. Well, then I'd stop worrying and start fishing. Looks like I'm one up on you. Whoa! Hey. 
from Memorial Gym in Nashville. 11.57 left in the half. Tom Hammond and Jodine Jr. where the Commodores have taken a 15-7 lead on Kentucky. Vanderbilt out shooting the Wildcats in the early going, although Kentucky is winning the rebounding battle 8-4. The Wildcats the worst rebounding team in the league. There's a turnover. Wilcox lays it in. Beautiful job on the timeout by Coach Newton. They go to a, back to a straight 2-3 zone, and on the entry pass by Kentucky, Charles Mays and Booker came out and trapped the ball hard. It surprised Hanson, and they got a steal. See, they're doing it again on the other side. Darren Feldhaus into the game at the timeout for Kentucky. Miller called for a travel, and the Wildcats turn it over again. The defensive change really surprised Kentucky and has caused the turnovers. Normally, you would not have turnovers against the zone defense, but the pressure by the guard in the wing has really caused Kentucky a, a little bit of problems here the last two possessions. Good job by Coach Newton and the Vanderbilt team. And Sean Sutton is back in the game with all those turnovers, already seven of them that have led to six Vanderbilt points. Aaron Feldhouse in, a 6'7 freshman from Maysville, Kentucky. As the Wildcats took Moran Ellis out of the game. Vanderbilt has Steve Grant in. He's touching the ball right there. He's 6'6", a sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Vanderbilt's actually running their man-to-man -man offense against this zone. It just creates a high-low situation with two wing players looking to get the ball to the wings for the shot or to look into the middle of the zone for a shot in the lane. Three seconds on the shot clock. Three-pointer no good. Jammed in on the rebound by Frank Cornett. Beautiful job by Frank Cornett. Again, there's not blockout responsibilities in the zone. Cornett found the open spot in the lane, went in, got up with the big right hand and jammed it in. Just a great athletic play by Frank Cornett, the senior. He's been hot lately. 97 points his last five games. And here's a foul on Charles Mays. Let's watch Cornette again operate off the offensive board. Again, with three seconds, a three-point shot by Wilcox comes off. Look at Cornette. Nobody blocks him out. He steps into the gap of the zone and jams it in. Beautiful, beautiful job by Frank Cornette. And here's the foul on the Kentucky end of the court. Reaching in foul committed by Charles Mays, the 6'7 sophomore out of Nashville. You really don't ever want to reach in against the zone. The shot there by Mills would have been a low percentage shot. Mays just over anxious, wanting to do a good job for Coach Newton. Reached in and committed the foul. Number 55 is Big Fred Benjamin, 6'11, 250 pounds, replacing Cornette. Benjamin, a sophomore from Manhattan, New York. Here's Mills at the free throw line for Kentucky. Kentucky only has three field goals so far in the half. Kentucky's really struggled offensively so far. They uh, missed a lot of easy shots early by Ellis, and then against the zone pressure, they've turned the ball over. Really, really struggling early on. Mills, who is a strong candidate for freshman All-America honors, has three points on three of four from the line. It's again a 10-point game. Normally you might say freshman of the year, but there's a guy in Baton Rouge that I believe is going to win that thing. Mr. Jackson has been unbelievable. That's exactly right. Patient Vanderbilt looking around the zone, trying to find the open seam in the middle of the zone, right in the middle of the lane where Mike Scott's standing. Benjamin needs to move in and out of the gaps of the zone to try to find himself an open spot. Just past the midway point of the first half from Nashville. Mays. Three-pointer is a bullseye. Charles Mays, who just made that shot, played high school ball for one of the Vanderbilt assistants, Mark Elliott. And I know that Mark feels real good about that shot right now. In fact, Mays has been hot. He's hit 10 of his last 13 field goal attempts. Feldhaus loses it. Here's Mays on the break. Mills knocked it away. Scramble for it, and Kentucky has it. Feldhaus picks it up. Mills did a good job getting back on defense, knocking the ball away. Miller for three. No good. Grant with a rebound. Ducky just can't hit the basket. Really struggling offensively, and, and Vanderbilt's pushing it down every time, putting pressure on that Kentucky zone defense. And the Commodores appear to be the much more confident team at the moment. There's no doubt about it. Booker for three, not there. Miller with a rebound. If Booker and Goheen really get to lighten it up, Kentucky's going to have to come out of that zone, but until they do, they can afford to play it. Pretty shot by Chris Mills. First field goal for Mills, and he has five. 
Chris Mills, a very impressive young player out of Los Angeles, California, the California Player of the Year last year, and has a lot of talent. Had a triple-double earlier in the year, which was, I think, the only time in Kentucky history that's ever happened. 19 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists against Austin P. He's had a double-double, double digits, points and rebounds eight times this year. I can see it. He's a very impressive young player. Foul inside. Called on Kentucky. Is it on Scott? Yes, Mike Scott with his first foul. Okay, here against the zone, Benjamin posting up real nicely inside, and Mike Scott just out of position reaches around. Normally, if you're out of position like that, you want to just hold your spot behind the player and hope you can get help from the perimeter from the guard of the forward on that side of the floor. 16 fouls against the Wildcats now with 8.20 left in the half as C.M. Newton comes back with his starting five, with the exception of Morgan Wheat, who is in. There's the three-point shooting. Kentucky still drawing a blank. Morgan Wheat, the freshman from Iowa. The, the book on him is that he's an outstanding outside shooter, so I'm sure they have him in to do some shooting against this zone. Wilcox shuffled his feet. That's the fourth Vanderbilt turnover. And we'll take a timeout here. The clock shows eight minutes, three seconds left in the half. Eddie Sutton and his Wildcats face an uphill battle. When I grow up, I'm going to save the whales. I'm going to have a big submarine like the man on TV. First, I got to learn how to swim real good. Then, I got to go to college. I got to get a marine biologically PhD. My mom and dad say I need that. They say, too, if I make good grades, they'll pay for it. My teacher says I draw frogs better than anybody. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Today, we're talking to the Gulf's top test driver about high-octane Gulf Super. Uh, tell us, Joe, does Gulf Super prevent knocking and pinging? Right! Joe, does it keep the fuel injectors clean for peak performance? Yeah! Well, we want to thank you, Joe, for taking time out from your busy schedule. No! Problem! Gulf Super, for better performance. Did you know that you can get a free car wash at the Plaza or South Mayo Trail Happy Marts? When you get at least an eight-gallon fill-up, you'll receive a wash, wax, and dry all free. So when your car needs gas and a good wash, it just makes sense to come to the Plaza Happy Mart or the South Mayo Trail Happy Mart for a free car wash from top to tires and front to back. Nobody takes care of you like the Plaza or South Mayo Trail Happy Marts. Happy Marts, we're taking care of Happy Marts. Vanderbilt 22, Kentucky 11. Eight minutes, three seconds left in the half. Much of the story of the game has been in the shooting. Vanderbilt hitting over 50%. And Kentucky, four of 12 so far in the half. certain that at the timeout, Coach Sutton talked to his players about working the ball around the zone more and try to stretch the zone out so they can feed inside and get some better shots against that zone. Obviously, they're not shooting well. You see him looking to try to get it inside right there, and there's Fellhouse with the shot. Fellhouse made a mo good move, head fake, took one dribble and popped it in, his first field goal. Darren Fellhouse played for his father at Mason County High School in Kentucky, Alan Fellhouse, who was a former player at, at Kentucky in the early 60s. Played for Coach Adolph Rupp. 60, 61, and 62. I believe that's correct. Was a tough player, they say. Call him the horse. That's right. Doheen thought about the three. Wilcox didn't only think about it, he hit it. Vanderbilt leads the SEC in three-point attempts. And obviously, against the zone, that's primarily what they're going to look for. If they make the three-pointers, it's going to be a tough night for Kentucky. Vandy hitting 39% of its three-point attempts. Last year, they led the league with 43.1. Kentucky early on is doing a better job here against this zone out of this last timeout of working the ball around and trying to get it closer to the basket for a higher percentage shot. I think they'd either like to get the ball inside to Ellis, on the baseline to Mills, or obviously let Miller take a perimeter shot. Darryl, Derek Wilcox committing his first foul. Sutton sets it up. With Sean Sutton on the bench, they lost all their offensive continuity. They've gone back to him despite his weakness with the flu. Mills misses inside, tapped around, saved by Feldhouse. Oh 
Sutton thought about shooting it, passed it instead. There it is. Ellis. Mills fights for it, but a lot of white shirts in there, and Goheen comes out. Nice pass to Reed. Missed the shot. Batted to Sutton of Kentucky. Miller double pumps off the glass. He's fouled. Tom, the, the possession before this one when Miller got fouled, I, they missed two shots. Mills on the baseline and Ellis in the middle of the lane, but they have to feel good about the shots that they got. He'll, here's Miller on the drive. He went by uh, Eric Reed and nice penetrating move, taking it to the basket. And you have to attack the zone sometime with the dribble in order to be effective. Barry Booker is back for the Commodores. Wilcox just committed his second foul. Derek Miller hasn't scored tonight. He is Kentucky's leading scorer in SEC play, averaging 18 a game. That one a brick. In fact, an interesting stat on Miller. Right. He's been in double figures 12 times this season. When he hits in double figures, he's averaging over 22 a game. When he's not in double figures, he only averages five a game. Exactly. And Kentucky, when Miller hits in double figures, has won seven and lost five. The, game, the games that they've lost, a couple of games they lost when Miller did not hit you know, 10 points or, or more were, were games they shouldn't have lost. Northwestern Louisiana and Bowling Green both at home in Rupp Arena. Richie Farmer is on the floor for Kentucky, replacing Sutton. Farmer, six-foot freshman from Manchester. Last year's Kentucky Mr. Bas uh, basketball as Derek Miller hits one of two at the line. We'll have to talk about Farmer as we go along. He's kind of a legend in high school basketball in Kentucky. Reggie Hansen also back for the Wildcats who trail 25-14. Base of the game slows a little bit here. Excuse me, Tom. Vanderbilt has a chance to really stretch this lead out against this Kentucky zone right here. Nice play there by Miller. Jumped in the passing lane and caused a turnover. That's the kind of thing Kentucky needs to do right now is force the action a little bit more and be just a little more aggressive on both ends of the floor. Steve Grant back for the Commodores. Vanderbilt now has turned it over five times with that latest one. Reed goes to the bench. 5.35 on the clock. Kentucky trying to cut into a lead. They've turned it over three more times than have the Commodores. Miller's outside shot barely drew iron. And Vandy goes the other way. Goheen. Cornett gives it up. They set up the offense. Cornett trying to post up Logue. Got a pretty good shot from Ellis, almost lost his balance. Was staggering a little bit. Shot clock down to 15. Goheen fires, no good. Long rebound, Cornette's got it. Really surprised Kentucky's given Goheen and Booker some of these perimeter shots. They're, they're really just gonna take their chances that those shots aren't gonna go in. Uh, but I, I'm real surprised because if Vanderbilt can start making some of these shots, I believe they can stretch this lead out. Wide open. Grant laid it in. He got away inside the defense. Kentucky just broke down in the zone. I'm not sure who it was on the weak side of the floor, but I think it was Ellis. He came across the lane invariably to cover an overload for Vanderbilt, and they spotted Grant on the weak side wide open. 27-14, the Vandy lead. Kentucky led 1-0. Since then, it's been all Commodores. One thing I really like to see against the zone defense is, is skip passes, passes from one side of the floor to the other over the top of the zone. I think it really helps to stretch the zone out and open the middle up to create some shots. Neither team really does a lot of that in this, in this case. Hanson with a strong rebound of the miss by Feldhaus. Makes the basket and draws the foul. Here's the last Vandy possession as you right. see Grant got away. Right, you see Ellis came up to the high post and, and left his position on the weak side. Booker spotted it, nice pass inside to Grant for the dunk. Here's the offensive rebound by, by Reggie Hansen. Just a great muscle athletic play there by Hansen. He gets it in, it was a beautiful play and something Kentucky badly needed at this juncture in the game. Second foul on Frank Cornett. Miller is out, replaced by Mills. And at the line, Hansen, who just picked up his first two of the game, trying for the three-point trip, he got it. 
Hanson, a good free throw shooter, fifth in the conference at 76%. And he's three-point play makes it a 10-point lead for Vanderbilt. Timeout. The Clydesdales. The symbol of Budweiser quality. A beechwood aging. The choicest natural ingredients and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. The IBM Personal System 2. Think of it as the engine of a train that links up with your business and moves it forward without leaving behind what you've already got on board, software and hardware so your business stays on schedule for tomorrow and makes news as it races ahead. The Personal System 2 family of computers. All aboard. When you're thinking ahead, you're thinking IBM. Hello, I'm Joe Hall. Kentuckians are proud of their winning tradition, and I want to remind you of another winning tradition right here in the mountains. Meyer Chevy Olds Cadillac in Barberville. Dennis Myers and his staff are dedicated to giving you the very best in sales and service. They'll save you money when you buy your new car or truck. And they'll take care of you after the sale with a service department that is second to none. That's why people all across southeastern Kentucky keep coming back to Meyer Chevy Olds Cadillac in Barberville. Across the Volunteer State in Knoxville, it's Tennessee taking on Mississippi State. Vanderbilt up by 10 here. And over in Knoxville, well, we're going to give you a different score, all right? We've got Georgia Tech leading Iona, or beating Iona, 79-68 as the Yellow Jackets step out of the conference. There's that score we were talking about. Tennessee in a close one against your alma mater. The Bulldogs trailing by four at Knoxville. Don't forget, at halftime, we'll have all the scores on our Budweiser scoreboard for you. Kentucky stays in the zone. A little more aggressive now coming out of it with Farmer and Mills out front. Vanderbilt's going to be patient. Going down the stretch of the half, they've got a 10-point lead with three and a half minutes to go. They don't want to take anything but a great shot right now against this zone, and I think you'll, you'll see them use a lot of time off the clock each possession they have the ball. There's the skip pass across for Mays. A jump shot right there. Beautiful play. Just didn't get the shot to go down. Mays missed it, and Mills has the rebound for Kentucky. Wildcats try to get it down under double digits now. Kentucky hitting 37.5% so far in the first half, but winning the rebounding battle 12 to 8. Chris Mills with five of those rebounds. Mills with a shot. Hanson mistimed his jump, and Mays was all alone for the rebound. Booker. Three-pointer a bullseye. Barry Booker, the first player in the game in double figures. He has 10. It's a 30-17 lead, equaling Vandy's biggest margin. You can see Vandy back in that 1-1-3 zone. Booker is right in the middle of the zone. He's playing from the high foul line down to the low post. Feldhouse throws it to Goheen for the slam. I tell you, this zone defense has really given Kentucky a lot of trouble. They've had a hard time just making passes to the wing. They haven't gotten the ball in the middle of the zone much and really just not getting very good shots. Richie Farmer, a little too high on the arch, and Cornette the rebound for Vanderbilt. And don't you think that Cornette, Wilcox, and Goheen, who are natives of the state of Kentucky, wouldn't like to beat the Wildcats here tonight. Goheen and Cornette facing Kentucky for the final time in regular season play. Obviously, there's a lot of emotion there with those three young men, and there are two other players on the Vanderbilt team from Kentucky as well. Barry Goheen bombs in another three-pointer. He has 10, and Vanderbilt threatening to blow Kentucky out of the gym. It's what I suspected earlier, Tom, against the zone. If, if you let those guys shoot the three-point shots, they can put this game out of reach, and they're almost going to do that here in this first half. Belthouse throws it away. Goheen. Goheen a little bit out of control. Commits the foul. Charging foul. Barry Goheen with his second. 
Yes. Well, the Commodores had the numbers. Bellhouse threw it away. Goheen picked it off and then just got a little out of control. Yeah, great anticipation by Goheen at, at the point of the zone. He just stepped in the passing lane, got it, went down and dunked the thing. It was that beautiful was, play. Well, here's the one I was talking about where he ends up running over the man. If he had to do it all over again, he would stop at the foul line like he's taught to do as a youngster and take that foul line jump shot. Turnovers have played a big part in the game. Kentucky's turned it over ten times. Vanderbilt six. Vanderbilt's gotten eight points off the Wildcat miscues. There's a Kentucky foul. That's really the story of the game for Kentucky offensively. Ten turnovers against the zone defense is very unusual. Normally, you don't have that kind of trouble against the zone because there's not as much pressure. But Vanderbilt has applied some pressure out of the zone, and Kentucky hasn't handled it very well. That was the third foul on Reggie Hansen, the first player in the game with three. Wildcats have John Pelfrey on the floor, 6'7", freshman from Paintsville, as Hansen picks up his third. Steve Grant at the line. He's hit eight of nine there this season. Steve Grant from Sprayberry High School in Atlanta. Had a great high school career there for Ken Klaus. A fine player. And Coach Newton thinks he has great promise uh, in the future here at Vanderbilt. Played in uh, 29 games as a freshman last year for the Commodores and was All-State in Georgia. Had his jersey retired. 1,200 points, 800 rebounds in his career. One of two at the line there. It's 36-17 Vandy. There's a foul as Hanson made a fake along the baseline. Very impressed with Reggie Hanson, Tom. He's a great athlete, really comes to play every night. He's probably been the most consistent player for Kentucky all year long. And when I talked to Coach Newton before the game, he made the comment that of all the players for Kentucky, Reggie Hanson was the one that he feared the most because he knew athletically he could hurt Vanderbilt inside. Fred Benjamin committed the Vanderbilt foul. Here's Morgan Wheat. Back in the lineup for Vandy, number 35, 6'5 freshman from West Des Moines, Iowa. Reggie Hansen had a brother, Art, who played at Cumberland College in Williamsburg, Kentucky, for a friend of mine, Randy Vernon. I've got to plug an NAIA program here tonight. Well, you've been a strong NAIA team at Birmingham Southern, annually making that trip to the playoffs. As you see, number 42, Alberto Balestra in for Vandy, the native of Bologna, Italy, 6'10 junior. Balestra is a young man that came from Italy. He played over there with Leon Douglas, who was a former uh, Alabama great under CM Newton. And, and uh, Leon Douglas told Coach Newton about Balestra, and he got him here at Vanderbilt. Balestra connects on one of two as Feldhaus returns. Go excuse, ahead, Joe. Excuse me, Tom. Balestra actually played at Calhoun Junior College in Decatur, Alabama last year and had a fine career there for Coach Bob Shuttleworth. Is that a bit of culture shock from Bologna, Italy to Decatur, Alabama? No question about it. <laughs> That's the score as we're inside the final 40 seconds of the half. Vanderbilt here will go for the last shot of the half. They're up by 18, and uh, they're going to want to either go in with that 18-point lead at halftime or possibly a 20 or a 21-point lead, depending on what happens on this last possession. The Commodores have dominated the first 20 minutes of play. See the clock ticking away inside the final 20 seconds. Goheen for three. Yes! <laughs> Little surprise he took that shot that early, but I don't think Coach Newton minds because it went in. Here's Mills. He gets one off for Kentucky. No good. Alice's follow will go. And the Vanderbilt Commodores with a three-point bomb falling have taken a 39-18 first half lead. Kentucky scored the first point of the game. But when the long rifles got unlimbered, the Vanderbilt Commodores took command. Goheen hits a three just before halftime. And at the end of the first 20 minutes of play, Vanderbilt leading Kentucky 39 to 18. We'll be back in just a moment. For your farm, your family, your piece of America. Across America, farmers are meeting on the safe use and handling of chemicals to become certified. This program proves how much farmers in their Cyanam and AgriCenter dealers care for the land and the environment. AgriCenter means more. This message from your local AgriCenter dealer. It's the statement you make as you travel through life, distinctive, decidedly you. 
Delco parts that go into race cars and the ones that go into your car? There isn't any. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. If you want to win, run with a winner. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1 800 AC Delco. Sellout crowd at Memorial Gym in Nashville and in a festive mood after a blazing first half by the Commodores. They lead Kentucky 39 to 18. Joe, that's about as dominant a first half of basketball as you could hope to see. Well, it really was very surprising. Of course, as we talked, Kentucky decided to play the zone defense, which if you do that, you're going to give up some perimeter shots. And Barry Booker and Goheen are two of the best three-point shooters in the league, and they shot them out right there in the last four or five minutes of the first half. Meanwhile, Kentucky with a lot of turnovers, and the Wildcats scoring only 18 points, their lowest first half total this season. They did have a few good plays. Here's Sutton with a pass to Mills, who makes the baseline jumper. Mills, an impressive play and hits the shot there. Kentucky just got to do a better job of, of moving the ball against that zone and getting it inside or on the baseline to Mills like he did there. There's a little lesson of how to attack the zone as Barry Goheen fires over it for three and the Kentucky uh, offense and Kentucky defense just no match for that long-range shooting of the Commodores in the first half. Yeah, there's not much coaching there. You know, when you have a Barry Booker and a Goheen, you just say, hey, fellas, turn it loose when you feel it. And uh, both those young men did that tonight and, and obviously that's why we have such a big lead. Vanderbilt Commodores with a great first half of basketball, leading Kentucky 39 to 18 in the first 20 minutes of play here at Memorial Gym in Nashville. That's the halftime score, and we'll be back to Nashville after this message from Vanderbilt University. At Vanderbilt, we care about the personal development of each student, the pursuit of individual talents in a setting of intellectual excellence. Warm in spirit, cool under pressure, enthusiastic in outlook. Our students choose Vanderbilt for many reasons. Interaction with faculty. And an ideal size. An education in life. And a warm environment. It's an opportunity to excel. Friendly people. Great English department. The diversity of the students. Vanderbilt is a great education. This is Vanderbilt. An experience to remember. A sense of community and devotion to excellence begins with the arrival of each freshman class. Our future is tied to a revolution in science and technology that promises new leverage for the human mind. With this must come judgments based on a moral philosophy, a sense of history and literature, an appreciation of art. At Vanderbilt, we speak of people with vision, people who can look squarely at the future with spirit and enthusiasm and not blink. You're watching Southeastern Conference basketball on the Jefferson Pilot SEC Network. That's the halftime score. We'll be back after a word from your local SEC station. Here it comes, the slamming, jamming, rip-roaring, good time video. The NBA's dazzling dunks and basketball bloopers. It's all new, fun and excitement. And the only way to get it is free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. See your heroes fly through the air with the greatest of ease and land just about anywhere they please. See them jump and jam, slip, slide and slam. See them dance and dive as they try to keep it alive. For 45 minutes of all the right stuff, they'll give it a whirl and give it a heave. And if you hang around long enough, you'll see things you won't believe. Of course, sometimes they miss and often they fall. But we'll let you be the judge of who's the greatest of all. You'll get lots of laughs and quite a bit more as all your favorites take the floor. Believe me, you can look high and low, but you won't find a more fantastic show. 
So call this toll-free number now to get the sensational video that reaches new heights in entertainment. The NBA's Dazzling Dunks and Basketball Bloopers, free from Sports Illustrated. And by calling now, not only will you get all the thrills and spills of your free video, you won't miss out on the exciting 25th anniversary edition of the famous swimsuit issue, featuring a bright and sunny look at the smiles and suits of the past 25 years in an issue devoted entirely to swimwear. Then the boys of summer swing along at SI's big baseball preview issue. You get all that and save almost 50% off the cover price. 25 issues payable in three monthly installments of only $9.89 each. And you can charge it if you want. Take advantage of the savings. Don't let anyone get the jump on you. Get it all first. The NBA's Dazzling Dunks and Basketball Bloopers. The anniversary edition of the Swimsuit Issue. The Big Baseball Preview. And enjoy all the great color and excitement of Sports Illustrated every week by calling this toll-free number now. 1-800-876-4848. 1-800-876-4848. The video is rated F for free. Thirty-nine, eighteen. Vanderbilt leading Kentucky at halftime from the Memorial Gym on the Vanderbilt campus in Nashville. Well, each uh, Wednesday night we take a look at our days in Rookie of the Week. This week's selection actually is a sophomore, a Proposition 48 casually from a year ago, but Cameron Smoke Burns has made a big difference inside for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. 16 points, 5 rebounds, and a losing cause against Kentucky. Then against LSU in the big Bulldog upset, 20 points and 11 rebounds. Cameron Burns has really made a difference for the Mississippi State Bulldogs this year. He's only 6'7", plays inside, but he's a tremendous athlete. You can see him right there. He takes long strides and takes it to the basket. A great dunker. I think he leads the league maybe in dunks, but a tremendous athlete and a very deserving player this week. Yeah, shooting over 70% of his field goals. He averaged 18 points and 8 rebounds for the week. And Cameron Smoke Burns of Mississippi State is our days in Rookie of the Week. And our uh, hat is off to uh, Smoke Burns, and the Bulldogs are a much improved team. And in the game at Knoxville against the Tennessee Vols. In fact, we'll have those scores for you in a moment. We remind you that our Days In Rookie of the Week is brought to you by the owners of Days In's Hotels and Suites in the Southeastern Conference. 39-18, Vanderbilt with a big lead at halftime. All the scores coming up. Life is a series of challenges. And for over 80 years, Jefferson Pilot has helped people face those challenges, reach their goals, and take advantage of life's opportunities through our insurance, financial services, and communication companies. It's something we're very proud of. The Jefferson Pilot Companies. We help put a brighter face on the future. If you can screw in a light bulb, plug in an extension, and then dim down what you screwed in, you have the basic ability to fix up what needs to be fixed up around your house. And Lowe's has everything you need to fix up anything you have that has anything to do with your house. Inside, outside, topside, and underneath. Lowe's has it all. So why don't you fix it? For whatever you need to maintain your home, we have it all at Lowe's. Fix it. What are you doing over there? That's where the fish are. Oh, no. They're right over there. Dollar on the first fish? How about five on the biggest? Okay. While we can't promise a Bell South Mobility car phone will help you catch bigger fish. Oh, this, this is big. This is real big. We can promise it'll give you more time to try. Bell South Mobility, the phone company for your car. All things great, all things that can be great, begin with a sound foundation. The 10 universities of the Southeastern Conference have been, are, and will continue to be committed to academic excellence, providing a sound foundation to what is great and what can be great. The Southeastern Conference, the foundation. Now it's time for the Budweiser scoreboard, brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And let's check our college basketball scores now on our Budweiser scoreboard. Here's a final score as Georgia Tech, out of the conference, beating Iona 79-68. 20th-ranked Yellow Jackets with a non-conference win. 
Georgetown, they're number one now, aren't they? Ranked first in the nation, I believe, in most of the polls anyway, with a win over UConn, over Connecticut, 70-58. SEC now. Here is Tennessee and Mississippi State. A two-point game down in Knoxville with Tennessee leading it 49-47. Georgia and Florida in Gainesville. Well, Georgia's been on a roll lately. Lost a lot of close games early. And at halftime in a low-scoring game, 29-20 over the Gators. LSU and Auburn, the league-leading Tigers against the winless Tigers of Auburn. 15-12, LSU with the upper hand. Louisville trying to rebound from the loss to Florida State, trailing by two early at Cincinnati. Texas and Arkansas, the two leaders in the Southwest Conference. Texas with a one-game lead coming in, but Arkansas winning in Fayetteville, 29-23 in the first half of play. And here are the standings now, Joe, with LSU on top. Yeah, LSU has a big game tonight down at Auburn. Uh, obviously, any game on the road is a game that if you can win, it gives you a little bit of a, an edge in the league race. So tonight's uh, game is, is obviously big for them. And you see the rest of the standings. And Georgia, with six losses, just about has to win all the remaining games in order to have a chance. But everybody above that still in the conference race. Georgia is a team, obviously, that was picked to win the league in the preseason. I don't think they can win the league now, but they're certainly going to have something to say about who does. Well, the Vanderbilt Commodores appear to be a hot team right now in the SEC. At least you could say that off their first half against Kentucky. We'll be right back. You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 300 Days Inn owners right here in the Southeast Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. Bernie here has one of the best sets of ears in the business. Together, we're going to prove that Gulf Super Gasoline prevents knocking and pinging. From the inside, I can hear no knocking whatsoever. Bernie, how about the outside? Fine! Let's see what this baby can do. Yep. High-octane Gulf Super prevents knocking and keeps your fuel injectors clean. Anything now, Burn? Nothing. This guy can hear the grass grow. I heard that. Gulf Super for better performance. Hello, I'm Joe Hall. Kentuckians are proud of their winning tradition, and I want to remind you of another winning tradition right here in the mountains. Meyer Chevy Olds Cadillac in Barberville. Dennis Myers and his staff are dedicated to giving you the very best in sales and service. They'll save you money when you buy your new car or truck. And they'll take care of you after the sale with a service department that is second to none. That's why people all across southeastern Kentucky keep coming back to Meyer Chevy Olds Cadillac in Barberville. Confidence is a big part of succeeding in business today. And as Eastern Kentucky supplier of quality Caterpillar equipment and service, Wayne Supply has built a reputation on the confidence of our customers. Confidence in knowing we'll come through with just the right equipment for the right job, big or small. And confidence in knowing that everything Wayne sells is backed by the best and most complete parts and service support to keep you on the job with less downtime. Whatever your needs in Eastern Kentucky, contact your nearest Wayne Supply branch. Wayne Supplies Confidence. Vanderbilt 39, Kentucky 18 as we get ready to start the second half of play. This J.P. Sports exclusive presentation of Southeastern Conference Basketball is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call J.P. By Budweiser, Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Gulf Oil, you go or Gulf pays the tow. By Squadron, superior broadleaf and grass control for soybeans in one convenient pre-mix. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And brought to you on WYMT by Mountain Ford, the First National Bank of Pikeville, by Happy Barts, your East Kentucky Toyota dealers, the Baptist Regional Medical Center, by First Commonwealth Bank, Meyer Chevy Olds Cadillac, and by Children's Quick Barts. Georgia and Florida locked up in a tight one. Here's Marshall Wilson of the Bulldogs getting a shot to the face. 
That's a Kerr, I think, who is a football player that's uh, loaned to the Florida basketball team and got faked up into the air and came down, and Wilson took a pretty good shot to the face. Well, that looked like a fist to the face. It really did. I can look. That's a tough play. I, I, you don't want to be using no, that kind of uh, aggression when you're playing, but uh, hopefully the young man wasn't too hurt, Marshall Wilson. He was kind of playing uh, basketball like a football player. That's here, right. Here are the halftime stats. That pretty well sums it up. Kentucky only six field goals, hitting 27%. From uh, the free throw line, the Wildcats better. Kentucky winning the rebounding battle. But the Wildcats trailing in the uh, big department. 0 for 5 from three-point range. And Vanderbilt hitting 7 of 14. So getting 14 points off their three-point attack in the first half. Or getting 21 points from their three-point attack in the first half. Kentucky's Mills has five. Hanson and Ellis four apiece. And for Vanderbilt, Goheen with 13 and Booker with 10. The only players in the game in double figures. So 21 of Vanderbilt's 39 points coming off three-point shots in the first half. Kentucky starts out like I figured they would, man-to-man. -man. They've got to shut down the three-point shots by Booker and Goheen. Kentucky's original starting five out there. Mills, Hanson, Ellis... Miller and Sutton. Here's a foul committed by Chris Mills, his first. And Vanderbilt also with its starting five intact. Booker, Reed, Cornette, Wilcox, and Goheen. Well, Chetty Sutton's always been known for great man-to-man -man defense, and he really is going to need to draw on that right now. He's done a great job through the years teaching man-to-man, -man, and Kentucky's going to have to play very aggressively here at the, in the first five minutes of the second half to try to creep back into this game slowly. Goheen can't get away from Miller. Now does, leans in, can't score. Mills with a rebound. So the man-to-man -man defense pays off that trip down court for the Wildcats. Miller. Rebounded by Goheen. And against Sutton, he's fouled. Sean Sutton commits the foul as Goheen spins to the basket. Vanderbilt very aggressive tonight offensively on every opportunity. They're pushing it down at the defense. Goheen, beautiful spin move there and gets the reach-in foul by Sutton. But the aggressiveness, the aggressive attitude, taking the ball at the defense is the thing that's helping Vanderbilt offensively here tonight. Barry Goheen at the free throw line for the first time tonight. The young man that has hit five game-winning shots in his career at Vanderbilt, including this season against Louisville and against Georgia. Barry Goheen played at Marshall County High School up in the western part of Kentucky for Coach Allen Hatcher. And uh, Marshall County has also produced a young man by the name of Dan Hall, who's a senior this year, 6'7 player, who has already signed to play here at Vanderbilt next year. 41-18 as Vanderbilt draws first blood in the second half. Bad pass intended for Henson. Reed picks it off, and Vanderbilt quickly up court. Lob to Cornette and lays it in. Outstanding pass there by Derek Wilcox. Simply just pushed the ball down the floor, attacked the defense. Cornette outran the Kentucky front line and got the layup. Good aggressive play by Vanderbilt. Cornette told me before the game that he's been waiting a long time for this one. Played at Lexington Catholic High School. Miller's three-pointer won't go. Tapped once, twice. Mills puts it up and in. Good job on the offensive boards by Mills there. Kentucky's got to get more scoring time from Derek Miller. There's no question when Derek Miller gets hot, shoots the ball well, and scores points for Kentucky, they have a better chance to win. Goheen trying to get by Miller. Miller can't stay with him. Commits foul number two. Again, the aggressive attitude by Vanderbilt here paying off. Wilcox pushing it on the break. Cornette runs the floor beautifully. Left-handed shot off the lob pass, which is kind of nice. Frank Cornette played for Tommy Starnes, Lexington Catholic High School, a legend up in that part of the country. Frank's father, Melton, is an organic chemistry professor at the University of Kentucky and a big basketball fan. He grew up in Indiana, was a Purdue fan. There's the give and go again. Unbelievable play. Oldest play in basketball. Booker feeds inside to Cornette and runs just a give-and-go cut to the basket. Cornette gave it back to the dunk. No help off the weak side by Kentucky. Beautiful offensive play. Barry Booker slams it through for his 12th point of the game, and Vanderbilt threatening to blow Kentucky out of the gym. Hanson rims out. Rebounded by Wilcox. Still on the run. Three on two. Cornette scores. 
Eddie Sutton calls for a timeout. Sutton and his Wildcats in shock as Vanderbilt is really cranked up. Here's the give and go, oldest play in the game. Dr. Naismith would be proud. Give and go to Booker on the dunk. Beautiful play, outstanding basketball by Vanderbilt. 17-22 left. They're rocking and rolling in Music City tonight. Critical acclaim for our performance. The Ford Probe is one of the finest front-wheel drive performance cars in the world. The GT suspension is precise and responsive. The futuristic exterior is matched by an interior that's open, airy, and modern. The Ford Probe and Probe GT, a performance you won't forget. Have you driven a Ford lately? For the pride, for the dream, for the love. Crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. An independent study proves it. Four out of five Toyota owners are so satisfied with Toyota quality, they'd most likely buy a Toyota again. Now here's even more remarkable news. Right now, prices on the reliable Toyota Tercel start at a remarkably low 63.28. And your Toyota dealer has a big selection of Tercels in stock right now. So don't wait. Drive away Toyota quality for as little as 63.28. See your Toyota dealer today for a remarkable deal and a remarkable Toyota car. This half of SEC basketball is brought to you in part by Bell South Mobility, the phone company for your car. Well, that's the situation. Jodine Jr., when they signed you up for this game, did they tell you that you may have to tap dance to fill a blowout? <laughs> very surprised by this. I uh, feel sorry for Coach Sutton and his team. They've been very tentative and just haven't shot the ball well. That's the biggest problem they're having. And, of course, Vanderbilt has their confidence going. He's really running the ball up and down the floor on the fast break. And just so far, it's been a tough night for Kentucky. Eric Miller still can hit. Miller does not have a field goal. Cornette to Booker. Cornette wanted it back. Couldn't get it. Wilcox to Goheen for three. Yes! I guarantee you right now, Alan Hatcher is doing a tap dance in his living room up in, in Marshall County, Kentucky. Alan is a high school coach of Barry Booker, and, and I guess he taught him how to shoot. I don't know, but whoever did, that youngster can really shoot the ball. Get this, Vandy leads by 30. Cornette misses the re misses the, uh, Cornette takes the rebound after the miss by Scott. I think the fans are in shock, too, but loving it. Kentucky beat Vanderbilt 70-61 earlier this year in Rupp Arena. Well, we could debate whether Arizona or Georgetown are number one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is unbelievable. I, I, you know, you never would figure that in, this would happen in a game of this magnitude. But Vanderbilt playing great. Another, an offensive rebound by the littlest guy on the floor, Derek Wilcox. That, you know, right there is the story of the game when something like that is, is allowed to happen by a good Kentucky team. The Kentucky players just stood there as Wilcox missed the shot. Nobody grabbed it. He just took it back and put it through. This has been one of the most dismal performances ever by a Kentucky team. Reggie Hansen finally breaks the ice. C.M. Newton will be taking over April 1st at the University of Kentucky as athletic director. He's got to wonder about this. Reed missed the slam. Kentucky comes the other way. Scott is open. Rimmed out. Reed with a rebound. Lob it. Cornett can't handle it. And Kentucky's got it. Vandy getting a little sloppy now with a 32-point or a 30-point lead. Miller misses the layup. Reed with the rebound, hands it to Wilcox. That's a big, big problem for Kentucky is Derek Miller has, doesn't have a field goal, is really struggling offensively, and they, he's got to give them 15, 18 points if they're going to have any kind of chance. Cornette. Can't get the roll, but is fouled. Derek Miller 0 for 9 for Eddie Sutton's team. What can a coach do in this situation? Well, it's really tough. I think right now you just have to substitute some fresh players and try to keep the 
the motivation level up. Uh, obviously, Kentucky is shell-shocked. They're down. And, and one of the things that shows up in a situation like this is the defensive transition. They start to loaf back. They don't get back. And Vanderbilt just pours it on even more. You've got to continue to hustle and work hard. And right now, Kentucky's just a little down. And they've got to just pick themselves back up. Frank Cornett, who's been plagued by injuries throughout his career, had knee surgery. As you mentioned earlier, at Lexington Catholic High School on the state tournament team, averaged 18 points, 10 rebounds a game, and there's offensive rebound for the Commodores. Anytime you get an offensive rebound off a defensive free throw, you know it's a tough night for you. Hanson with a good steal. Lobs it, and a stop by Ellis. That shows you a little bit of the young talent that Kentucky has. And of course, you know, I think it needs to be pointed out, Tom, that Kentucky does start a freshman and three sophomores. They are very young. They have some talented players. But it's to There's an in-your-face job by Frank Cornett. Kentucky's really just standing around defensively. Nobody sealed down the baseline, uh, rotated over in the zone and, and are in the defense, and, and they're just kind of, like I say, they're just shell shot. Reggie Farmer can't hit. Loose ball, Wilcox. Knocked out of bounds by Sutton, hustling back on defense. It'll be Vandy's ball. Nice play by Reggie Hansen. Reggie Hansen comes to play every night. I'm very impressed with him. Made the steal, saw the lob. Leron Ellis, nice play, good athletic move. 55-24 Vanderbilt. 13-50 to play. Wilcox, line drive shot no good. Foul on the rebound as Reed and Ellis were scrambling for it. Or was it Booker? Let's see. The foul is on Booker. Fans didn't like it. Sam Newton has seen Booker pick up his second. Even though the call was went against Booker right there, he did a good job getting to the offensive boards. And you know, if you're Kentucky, the two things that you need to do right now, even though you're behind by 30 points, you need to block out on the defensive boards, one, and you need to hustle back defensively. You may not be making shots, but you can do those two things because they're simply hustle plays, and Kentucky needs to continue to hustle even though they're down. Feldhouse replaces Sutton. Can they continue to play at such a deliberate pace down so far? Well, they've got to obviously pick it up now and push the ball down a little bit quicker on the break and also look for some quicker shots, hopefully for some three-point shots. They've got to find somebody to hit a couple of threes. That's the one thing about the three-point line, Tom. You know, it's, it's, it's not effective unless a team is making a lot of them, and then the other team needs to match that. Cornette with a beautiful jump hook over the 6'11", Leron Ellis, who applied only token resistance. Frank Cornett's got to be feeling great tonight. His going out party against his home state school, Kentucky, he's really having a great game. Mills can't hit, rebounded by Booker. Cornett, SEC Player of the Week last week. Out of bounds, back to Vandy. Cornett's hit double figures for the 21st time this season and doing a great job replacing Will Purdue for Vanderbilt. He played forward last year, did Cornette, and boy, he's been a force. Leading scorer and rebounder for the Commodores. Goheen can't hit. Mills with a rebound. Chris Mills doing a good job on the boards for Kentucky, approaching double digits and rebounding. Has nine, and there has two more points. Give him nine points for the game. Beautiful play by Mills. Boy, he's a talented freshman. He takes the ball one-on-one -on -one against the zone off the left hand and scores with a left-hand layup, which is really a nice play. Cornette over Ellis again. Vanderbilt just simply overloading the side defensively, clearing out the weak side help and throwing the lob over Ellis to Cornette. Kentucky has got to have somebody to slide down in the lane and give some help on the weak side. Hanson, good fake of Cornette to lay it in. I really like Reggie Hanson. Reggie Hanson plays hard. He's an athletic player. He has not given up. He needs to try to get his teammates fired up with him so maybe they can make uh, somewhat of a game of this or at least just keep their spirits up right now. Cornette calling for the ball again, posting up against Stellis, but Wilcox thought better of it. There's the shooting. Wow. Cornette, that one, that one didn't have much of a chance, but Goheen with an offensive rebound. 
Ellis did a good job contesting that shot that time. He, he, he's starting to pick it up a little bit. I don't think he likes Cornette whipping him inside, so he's got his motor, motor running a little bit more. Well, the only thing Kentucky did well in the first half was rebound. I think Vandy's taking care of that this half. Yeah, that's true. Wilcox dips the noodle on go. Rebounded by Hanson. Vanderbilt's getting any shot they want. Kentucky just isn't playing real hard defensively. They've just got to pick it up a little bit and keep their heads up. Reggie Hanson. Feldhaus. Good. Showed some signs of his father right there. A little toughness. Uh, Knocked the guy down to get the offensive rebound and stick it back in. Nice play by Feldhaus. Yeah, he had bodies flying all over as Feldhaus got point number four. Roheen to Cornette. No, the basket won't count. Blocking foul, Ellis of Kentucky. Third foul on Leron Ellis. Kentucky gets Scott and Pelfrey back on the floor, replacing Farmer and Hanson. Well, Frank Cornette, six foot nine, outplaying the 6'10 Leron Ellis so far in the game. There's the lob pass that cleared out the weak side right there. Cornette muscled it in over Leron Ellis, and obviously that's a key play in the game. 13 points for Cornette. Ellis has only six, and Vandy way on top. Give me a hot, dusty day any time of year. Give me my favorite Ford and mud up to here, because I love getting dirty. Get 4.9% financing or up to $750 cash bonus on 89 Rangers. We met in pre-dental and uh, opened our practice 15 years ago. Best buddies, usually. Usually. Hey, things work out. Hey, it could be worse. I'll tell you one thing, there aren't many guys I could work with. Yeah, neither can I. See, right now, our primary concern is making sure the practice continues in case one of us, uh, you know, bites the dust. Bites the dust? Well, you know what oh, I mean. Come on. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. What do you say, everybody? It's me, AJ. Boy, I really love the Kentucky outdoors, huh? And you know, when I head out to the wilds, there's nothing I love more than stopping by Quick Mart and picking up some goodies. Yeah, but as much as I love to see one of these cold on a hot Kentucky day, I sure do hate to see them lying around empty. But God gave us some of the most beautiful scenery anywhere. But it's up to you and me to keep it that way. Now, we appreciate you stopping by Quick Mart and picking up goodies, but please, dispose of your containers properly, huh? Oh, wait, hey, I got one! 59-30, Vandy leading Kentucky. Vandy already with three players in double figures. Goheen with 18, Cornette with 13, Booker with 12. Kentucky led by Chris Mills with nine. They don't have a player in double figures. Only has scored 30 points in 30 minutes of play. There are the points off turnovers. That's actually 20 points for Vanderbilt off Kentucky turnovers. That's sort of a reverse there. Flip-flop, yeah. Kentucky man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds, trying to take away any three-point opportunity by Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt doing a smart job. They're going to pound the ball inside to Cornette and let him take it in on Scott. Nice flash back outside by Cornette, and Wilcox bombs the three. Cornette's a very intelligent young man. He gets the pass inside. The defense collapses around him. He fans it outside for the three-point shot by Wilcox. 32-point lead for the Commodores. I don't think anybody, even the most optimistic Bandy Damn. fan, thought that would happen. Cornette. Batted around, Booker's got it for Vandy. Nice job by Eric Reed keeping that ball alive right there. Eddie Sutton's tried just about every lineup combination you can imagine. Right now, Ellis Scott, Feldhouse, Pelfrey, and Mills. Had made much difference. Same result. Cornette missed the jump hook. And a rebounding foul, Eric Reed of Vanderbilt. 
as they walk to the other end, I think we've got to give a lot of credit to CM Newton's staff. They've done a tremendous job helping Coach Newton with this team. John Bostic, who's been with him for many, many years at Alabama and Vanderbilt, and Ed Martin, who has over 500 wins himself at uh, South Carolina State and Tennessee State, and also Mark Elliott. They've done a great job helping Coach Newton with this Vanderbilt team. And a rare to have two guys on the bench, each with over 500 college wins. There's LaRon Ellis moving inside for his eighth point. Needed to do that a little bit earlier in the game, and, but at least, uh, you know, they're trying to do some things that are, that are good to just, as I say, keep their spirits up and, and hopefully get ready for the next game. Well, you know, CM Newton has to have a big smile, at least inside, if not outside, because I think one of the writers here in Nashville has criticized him for a conflict of interest, and he's taking care of all that tonight. No question about it. There, there's no way that this is a conflict of interest for Coach, for Coach Newton. Here we see the replay, just penetrating dribble by Frank Cornett, taking it right to the basket. Mike Scott can't handle him, a little bit too slow on the, on the weak side, and, or excuse me, on the perimeter, and then Kentucky gets no weak side help there on the drive. Mike Scott picked up his second foul and goes out. Reggie Hansen is back in, and so is Derek Miller for Kentucky as Cornett at the free throw stripe. Really can't say enough about Frank Cornett. He's Vanderbilt's leading scorer and rebounder this year. They lost Will Purdue to the NBA last year, a first-round draft pick. A lot of pressure on this young man to come in and fill that void in the middle, and he has really done a great job. And is one of the reasons why Vanderbilt is a contender in the league race this year. Had only two points at the half, did Frank Cornett. And he remembered it was his final game against Kentucky. He's got 15, and he'll get a rest right now to the applause of the sellout crowd at Memorial Gym. I suspect this is a game he'll remember for a long time. There's no doubt about it. A lot of emotion with these Kentucky kids when they play Kentucky wearing a Vanderbilt uniform. Mills, double teamed. Miller was open, a little hesitant. And Decided not to shoot. Get that way when you're 0 for 9. That's true. Hanson inside, and they call a jump ball. They tied Hanson up. The possession arrow on the alternate possession in favor of Kentucky. That's a tough break. I thought Hanson got fouled right there, but the official was right on top of it. Obviously, he can see it better than I can. Well, Kentucky, the all-time leader in college basketball with 1,464 wins. 60 straight non-losing seasons. There haven't been many darker days than this one. No, they really haven't. And uh, you have to feel sorry for Coach Sutton and his staff right now because they're just having a tough, tough night. And Vanderbilt's playing tremendous. You have to give Coach Newton a lot of credit on the other side. Foul on Steve Grant, who looked like he had a pretty good block. Let's see if we can check it on the replay. Nice penetration there by Miller. Feeds inside. Ellis takes it up real strong. Did look like a good block. I guess the official called him for the body. LaRon Ellis will be at the free throw line for the first time. You see he's about half his average. They've the key, got to have him to win. No question. I was going to say the key for Kentucky has got to be Ellis inside and Miller outside. And really neither, neither players have had very good games tonight. And it's been one of Kentucky's problems offensively. Ten points now for LaRon Ellis, who hits double figures for the 18th time this season. But it's probably too little too late for the Wildcats. Clydesdales, the symbol of Budweiser quality, of beechwood aging, the choicest natural ingredients, and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. Today we're talking to the Gulf's top test driver about high octane Gulf Super. Uh, tell us, Joe, does Gulf Super prevent knocking and pinging? Right! Joe, does it keep the fuel injectors clean for peak performance? Yeah! Well, we want to thank you, Joe, for taking time out from your busy schedule. No! Problem! Gulf Super, for better performance. 
When I think of great food, there's two places that come to mind first. My mom's Sunday afternoon meals and the deli at any Happy Mart. Once you've eaten the fried chicken and potato wedges at the Happy Mart, you'll know what Southern cooking really means. Then there's all those homemade salad sandwiches like ham, chicken, tuna fish, egg, and pimento cheese, all made fresh daily. So when I want a sub sandwich or just pick up a few last-minute grocery items, I always go to the Happy Mart. Unless, of course, mom gets one of those Sunday dinners cooking. 7.58 left in the game. 30-point Vanderbilt lead. Don't forget, at the conclusion of the game, we'll be selecting a golf most valuable player from each team. Golf and its dealers will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Full court pressure now from Kentucky. Vandy having some problems with it. They beat the 10-second count and set it up on the half court. The announcers for this game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions, this broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot is prohibited. Booker. Shot blocked, and Kentucky has it. Fans wanted a foul. They're still smelling blood. They love their Commodores here in Nashville. John Pelfrey has taken over point guard duties for the Wildcats. Sean Sutton, remember, weakened by the flu. Needs to hit this right here. Can't do it, though. That's right. Mills misses from three, and Booker out hustles Kentucky for the ball. Reed, Cornette, foul hard by Mills. Oh, and they get up and square off a little bit. Looks like uh, tempers have cooled. Here's the play again. Vanderbilt pushing the ball down the floor. Kentucky just not getting back defensively. And Cornette goes up and gets the body. I think he thought that Mills pushed him intentionally. He had his back to him and really couldn't see it. It was just a good aggressive play by Mills. I don't think he meant anything bad. But, but Cornette got a little bit upset because he got thrown down kind of hard. It's just one of those things that happens in basketball. And Tom O'Neill, the official, stepped in and did a good job of keeping the players away from each other. Mills will go out. Eddie Sutton doesn't want any uh, fight to occur. And, uh, in fact, with the new rules this year, you could be in danger of being suspended for a game should that happen. So Jonathan Davis is in, a 6'6 freshman from Pensacola, Florida. Fordette missed the first free throw, gets another. That one, too, comes out. Hanson with the rebound. Vandy by 30. Kentucky, 18 points in the first half. There's a foul as Wilcox goes for the steal. Vanderbilt stays in that zone. It's a, as I said before, it's a 1-1-3, and basically Wilcox plays the point outside. The second man in is uh, Barry Booker, and Barry Booker slides down and covers the low post in the zone while the forwards come out and play the wings when it's there. Trying to shut down the, the wing shooting. Sutton replaces Pelfrey. Derek Miller still does not have a field goal in the game. And is 0 for 10 now. Missed everything. Three on two. Behind the back. Booker fouled. Miller hit him hard. And then Booker bounces off the backboard. Well, they didn't call a foul. Didn't call a foul. And, and Don Rutledge ran in and changed the call by Larry Ware. Larry Ware was going to give the ball back to Kentucky. But Don Ware uh, changed the call. Here's, there's the, the play. He got bumped right there. I don't know what the official could have been seeing. But he gave it a no call. Well, Booker made his point right there. I, if that's not a foul, I haven't been watching the game very long, but it didn't matter. Then Booker hit a three-point shot on the inbounds play. There's a three-point shot, finally, for Kentucky. Sean Sutton, is that Kentucky's first three-pointer of the game? Yes. Obviously, the biggest story in the game right there. The, the turnovers by Kentucky and the three-point shooting, Vandy versus Kentucky. Inside, Goheen lays it in. Goheen has 20. Kentucky acts like they don't know what help side defense is. We, they got the back door cut, but nobody rotated over from the weak side to help on the back door cut. Hanson can't hit. Cornette has the rebound. Kentucky 
Only one of eight from three-point land. Reed gets in on the act. Basket counts. Eric Reed is the most improved player on the Vanderbilt team from Macon, Georgia. Attacks the basket aggressively. Jumps up, double pumps. Here you see it again, double pumps. Great strength inside and gets the foul by Jonathan Davis. Beautiful play by Eric Reed. Reed tries to make it a three-point trip. Rattles out and then back in. Eric Reed will be called on next year to, to fill the role for Frank Cornett, the big center in the middle, and I, I think he'll do it. He'll, he, he looks like a big, strong athlete who really works hard. There he is again on the steal. Reed behind the back. Wilcox lost it, but Booker's got it for Vandy. Everything going the way of the Commodores. Lob Cornett. Ellis with a good defensive play. Picks it off. They quieted the crowd for a moment. Inside the final minutes of the game. Final five minutes of the game. I wish it were the final minutes. <laughs> Sutton's three-pointer is good. good. Sean Sutton has both three-point baskets for Kentucky tonight. Good for Sean Sutton. I have a lot of respect for Sean Sutton. He's a real gutsy player. He comes in. He's sick tonight. Not feeling well, but he wanted to come in and contribute to this team and, and has played his heart out. Cornette couldn't quite get control of the lob, and Kentucky comes the other way. Sutton again. Again he hits. That's just a two. Two-point shot, but Sean Sutton has ten. He's in within three of his career high. Played at Henry Clay High School in Lexington. Al Pruitt, his coach, just won his 600th game this year. Another one of the outstanding high school coaches in, in Kentucky. Derek Miller tried for the steal. Couldn't control it. It goes back to Vandy. And he's Sutton and his team shell-shocked here tonight as Mills returns. And Miller is out, still doesn't have a field goal. Wilcox sets it up for the Commodores with just over four minutes to play. Goheen fouled by Mills. Tom, one thing I'd like to say about Barry Goheen and Barry Booker, two seniors who obviously played a great game here tonight, both of these young men are academic all-SEC performers. Not only are they outstanding players on the floor, but they're outstanding students in the classroom, and I think there's this definite correlation today in college athletics between a youngster who does well in the classroom and also happens to perform well on the basketball floor. The two go hand in hand, and for any young man out there who's aspiring to play college basketball, hey, get in the classroom and do the job with your schoolwork, and you can make it in college basketball. In fact, Goheen has twice been academic all SEC and has a cumulative grade point average, 3.14. The route is on. Despite being wonderful companions, my subject group scored low in all coordination skills, showed poor organization, and no decision-making abilities. Unless I can bridge the gap between us, this project will be canceled. Thank you. You're welcome. The multiple port fuel injected Ford Escort GT. Because what's rock without roll? Get 4.9% financing or $500 cash bonus on 89 Escort. In 1889, a great banking tradition began in Pikeville, Kentucky. 100 years later, that tradition continues to grow at the First National Bank of Pikeville. Throughout the years, we became the first friends of many of this region's families and businesses. We dedicate our centennial celebration to those that persevered with us through the bad times and celebrated the good times. We pledge to you an even stronger and more responsive First National. And it is to you that we say, thanks for 100. Barry Goheen with those two free throws now has 
1,332 points in a Vanderbilt uniform, number nine all time for the Commodores. It's cracked the top ten in scoring for Vanderbilt as the Commodores continue to outshoot the Wildcats. Something open from the corner. Four of three pointer. And Sean Sutton with 13 points has equaled his career high. Blue or not. He's shot the ball very well here in the second half. Nice oh. job by Sean Sutton. Only a 41% shooter. Mills with a strong rebound. Sutton throws it away. Wilcox will take it in. Mills fouled him hard. Wilcox might be hurt. Chris Mills has just fouled out of the game, and he's going to hear a chorus of boos as he leaves. Well, I really think they're undeserved. You know, I, I think Chris is just a little frustrated at tonight, as all the Kentucky players are. He wanted to stop the layup down there, and I thought, you know, from his point of view, it was just a, a good aggressive play. Nothing intentional and, and certainly nothing malice. Chris Mills fouls out of the game with nine points and nine rebounds. Chris Mills is going to be a great basketball player at the University of Kentucky before he leaves. Has a lot of talent. He looks like a just a good-looking young player, and, and, and I like his demeanor on the floor, and I really think he has a very bright future. 3.08 left in the game. John Pelfrey replaces Mills. You have to feel for Coach Eddie Sutton tonight, Tom. You look at his record, it's just unbelievable. Over 400 career wins, 12 straight times he's taken teams to the NCAA tournament, which is just, just unbelievable. The final four in 78, three times he was he's named National Coach of the Year in college basketball, and he was the former president of the National Basketball Coaches Association, which is a tremendous honor. Mays is on for Vanderbilt. But it's not been a year that Eddie Sutton will uh, want to remember. He's never had a losing season. That's in jeopardy. And, of course, the allegations by the NCAA and the investigation, the rumors that he'll be losing his job have all made it a very distracting season. And then a young team that's been very inconsistent has added to the woes for Eddie Sutton. But nothing has ever been said about his coaching ability. That's never been in question. Vanderbilt foul, as you see Eddie Sutton, committed by Charles Mays. Sends Sean Sutton to the free throw line, and he'll have one more shot. He's only a 51% free throw shooter. They say he hits well in practice, but in a game, he just can't hit. He looks a little tight at the foul line. Got one of two, and that's his college career high. 14 points for Sutton. Great effort tonight by Sean Sutton. Really proud of the job he's done for the Kentucky Wildcats tonight. Cornette slams. It'll count, and the foul on Frank Cornett. Charles Mays feeds Cornett on the baseline. Kentucky missed the defensive assignment. He takes it to the hole with one thing in mind. He's going to jam it and put it through. Beautiful play, although he did draw the foul. 31 points the margin. Kentucky's worst defeat of the modern era was 35 to LSU in 1987. That's in jeopardy. Ellis can't hit. Goheen spins away from Ellis to Cornette. Reverses and is fouled by Ellis. Number four on Ellis. If you're wondering about the worst defeat ever for Kentucky, it occurred in 1910. Central beat them by 70. But in the modern era, 35 by LSU in 1987. Sports trivia for the night. Where is Central? <laughs> Vanderbilt's done a great job tonight running the fast break, and that's how they got the, the free throws right there for Frank Cornett. Cornett's struggling at the line, though. He's hit only three of seven. Coach Newton's fixing the substitute for Frank Cornett and Barry Goheen, the two, two seniors from the state of Kentucky, to let them get a standing ovation by this crowd of 15,000 here in Memorial Gymnasium tonight. Here it comes. Well deserved, well deserved.
one of the nice things about Memorial Gym, when, when you get taken out for a standing ovation, you have to run all the way to the end of the baseline. You get to enjoy it a little bit more. Can't be as much fun, though, if the coach is taking you out and yelling at That's you That's true. Good point. <laughs> Goheen fouled as Sutton reaches in. I'll tell you, every missed shot by Kentucky, Vanderbilt is just turning and blowing it down the floor in a fast break situation. Kentucky's not really doing a good job getting back defensively, and Vanderbilt's just creating all kind of shots for themselves on the fast break opportunity. And they've been doing that all night, and, and that, among a, a few other things, is the story of the game. This is going to be the largest win ever for Vanderbilt over a Kentucky team. As Goheen hits the free throw. He's perfect now in five times at the line. The biggest Vanderbilt win in the entire series, which covers 130 games, was 18 by Vanderbilt in 1965. Pelfrey, fouled by Benjamin. Here comes Derek Wilcox to replace Barry Goheen. And I'll tell you what, this crowd's going to erupt as Barry Goheen goes out of the game. Well-deserved, tremendous basketball player from Marshall County, Kentucky. Well-deserved ovation. And there are the two Kentucky seniors, Cornette and Goheen, playing against the State University of their home state for the final time in regular season play. And there'll be some grandchildren who'll hear about this one years to come. I believe they'll save this videotape for many, many years. John Pelfrey, former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, a red shirt. Freshman hits one of two. 203 left in the game. Richie Farmer, another former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, back on the court. Richie Farmer, as we talked, had 51 points in the state championship game last year. Got beat. His Clay County team was beaten in the state championship by Louisville Ballard High School, who had a player named Allen Houston, who's going to Louisville next year, the son of Louisville assistant coach Wade Houston. Wilcox gets away from the double team. Cleet in front court. 154 and counting. It's a 32-point lead, Vandy over Kentucky. Biggest win ever for the Commodores over the Wildcats. Benjamin, no good. Tap, no good. Scott has it. Pelfrey, or no, excuse me, Feldhouse. Feldhouse. Threw a body block on Mays, and it went out of bounds to Vandy. Coach Claver needs to work on his technique a little bit. <laughs> there are most valuable players. Our golf MVP, Sean Sutton for Kentucky, had a career-high 14. And Barry Goheen and Frank Cornett. Cornett from Lexington, Kentucky. Goheen from Calvert City, Kentucky. In their careers with a great win over the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Gulf Most Viable Player Award Scholarship Program. Gulf will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund, both Kentucky and Vanderbilt. Cornette left the game with 16 points, and Goheen had 23. Farmer picks off the pass. No good. Followed by Feldhaus. 51 seconds and counting. It's a 30-point game. Wheat wide open. Short. Farmer. Bandy's got it. Pelfrey fouls with 32 seconds. C.M. Newton answered the critics tonight. A few of the fans, one of the writers, had said the man has a conflict of interest. He's going to be Kentucky Athletic Director starting April 1st. How can he coach against that team? He said, we're going to try to beat their fannies like always. <laughs> you can put an exclamation point on the end of that. C.M. Newton is a very, very competitive man. He's one of the great basketball coaches in, in, in this game today, and there's no way that that's a conflict of interest. On April the 1st, he'll try to become Kentucky's 
best athletic director ever. Right now, he's trying to be the very best basketball coach for Vanderbilt University he can. He's made a commitment to these young men to try to help them win the SEC championship, and he's going to do everything in his power to get them there uh, this season. Newton played at Kentucky, of course, and this will be win number 503 in his career and certainly one of the most memorable. Humphrey's shot is blocked. Mays having some trouble. Hansen will go in. Ten seconds left. Wheat dishes it off to Benjamin and Scott fouls him. Five seconds left. Sutton, all you can do is laugh about it. He probably wanted to get out of here. He didn't want that foul with five seconds left. He just soon gotten on the bus. Scott having a little laugh about it, too. All you can do is laugh when you've been blown out. It's a 30-point margin with five seconds left. Vanderbilt's biggest win ever over Kentucky in 100 31 games counting tonight. Belt House from midcourt. Well, Kentucky actually scored the first point of the game. After that, the Commodores took over and a sweet moment for Barry Goheen and his fellow Kentuckians on the Vanderbilt team as they beat the Wildcats by 30 points. C.M. Newton accepting the handshakes, and we'll be back after a word from your local station. Ah, Jonesy, we made it last. Let's dispense with the pleasantries. I'm hurt. After all, you wanted this deal. Did somebody say deal? Get deals you can't refuse during the big Dodge truck push now. Great deals on two- and four-wheel drives, full-size or mid-size. Great deals on imports, utility vehicles, and vans, too. Hurry in before... Wait! Well, do we have a deal or not? Did somebody say deal? See, See one of your Southeast Kentucky Dodge dealers. Johnson Industries produces quality equipment to meet the coal industry's needs. Each product is manufactured with pride at their modern industrial facility. After careful assembly, every product is strenuously tested and inspected before being released for sale. Johnson Industries offers a full factory warranty, a huge inventory of parts, daily UPS parts delivery, and field service personnel. Johnson Industries now provides qualified customers a no-interest lease purchase plan. Well, it was an old-fashioned blowout at Memorial Gym tonight before a sellout crowd in Nashville as the Vanderbilt Commodores, leading 39-18 to 18 at halftime, blow it wide open to a 30-point win, their biggest win ever in 131 games against the Kentucky Wildcats, 81-51, as C.M. Newton, who will take over as Kentucky Athletic Director April 1st, faces the Wildcats for the final time in regular season play and wins by 30. Ditto for some Kentucky natives on the team, Barry Goheen and Frank Cornett. And right now, Jodine Jr. is courtside with the all-stars of the game, the Kentucky natives, Goheen and Cornett. Joe? Okay, we've got the two stars of the game right here, our most valuable players, Barry Goheen from Marshall County, Kentucky, and Frank Cornett from Lexington, Kentucky, Catholic High School. They have to feel awful good right now. Barry, uh, this had to be awful special to you, being a senior here, being from the state of Kentucky. Tell us your thoughts. Well, uh, knowing this was, unless we meet him in the tournament the last time uh, I was ever going to play Kentucky, I thought it was really important to to go out with a win. We beat them down here last year, and we really wanted to beat them this year because they had they had beaten us pretty good up in Lexington. And uh, the fact that we're both contenders and had the same record also just made it that much more important. So it was just a great night all the way around. Your eyes had to get awful big when you saw the zone by Kentucky in the first half. Yeah, I think they wanted to make us uh, prove that we could hit from the outside. And, uh, you know, we established that early. Everyone was hitting. It wasn't just one person. We had uh, Derek and Book hitting, uh, and then myself, I hit a couple to get us going. So, you know, that really forced them out of the zone. It was really a key in the game. Really surprised in the game that you guys pushed the ball down the floor so well in the fast break. I thought, Frank, your teammates really ran the floor well and did a good job. Was that part of your game plan tonight to run the floor? It certainly was. And uh, Coach Newton has always stressed that you can't have a fast break without big men running. You can't just have guards running. And all year, Frank and Eric and, and the forwards off the bench have really run the floor well. And 
You know, that's always important in a fast break. And, and we, if you make their big guys get back, that can also hurt their offensive board work. So you know, it serves a few purposes, and it really helped us out tonight. Congratulations, Barry Goheen. Thanks a lot. All right. Frank Cornett from Lexington. Frank, you have to feel awful good about tonight's game. Uh, I feel wonderful. This is one game I always look forward to. Uh, we just came out tonight and shot the lights out in the first half. Our guards really did a hell of a job shooting the ball from the perimeter. and it, They bring them out of that zone, and uh, it was just a great game all the way all the way through. Frank, you know, coming into this year, you had a lot of pressure on you, uh, taking up the space of Will Purdue in the middle. How did you feel about that? I, th I think you've done a great job for the team this year. Uh, I think no one ever replaced Will Purdue. He's one of the best that's ever worn in the black and gold. Uh, I just try to go out every night and play as consistent as, I, consistent as I can and help our team come out on top. Did you guys talk any today or, or, you know, this week in preparation for this game about what it might mean to Coach Newton, him going to Kentucky as athletic director next year? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's always in the back of our minds. Me, Barry, being seniors and being from Kentucky, and Coach Newton, this being his last game against us, we knew it would be a very special one, and we really wanted to come out with a win. Okay, guys, congratulations. We'll let you go get a shower. You did a great job. You're our MVPs tonight. Thanks a lot. Okay. Coach Newton, obviously uh, your team just played out of sight tonight. I know you have to feel real good. Joe, we really, really played well. Um, Thank you. We really played well in, in terms of, of – you know the offensive execution we shot it so well and and really I just couldn't be more pleased with our defense so it was a, it was a big game for us and we played well well you know both teams zoned early in the game and and I, I was really surprised Kentucky zone with your three-point shooters and then you zone but put a lot of pressure on them out of the zone yeah we we started man and then when they put the big line up in we couldn't stay man so we went zone and and uh, tried to get to Miller of course Sean got loose late but I thought we pressured their their shooters on the perimeter very well I thought you ran the ball real well tonight. Fast break was a big key. Yeah, that's a big part of what we're about, but that's all triggered with our defense, Joe, as you well know. And if, if you're sound and play well on the defensive end, it opens up a lot of opportunities for transition. And I thought we executed well in the break. Okay, Coach Newton, thanks a lot. Great win tonight. Thanks a lot, Joe. Okay, back to Tom Hammond. All right, Joe, as Coach Newton answered the critics tonight with a resounding victory over Kentucky, he beat them by 30, 81 to 51. We'll be back to Nashville for some final comments in just a moment.